Alright, hey guys, so I'm going to be showing you how to edit this particular image that I shot a few months ago down at South Stay in Manly. Um, so what I'll first do whenever I get any import of images is that I'll bring them into Adobe Bridge, uh, which you see here. Obviously it'll have all the metadata for the shot here. So you see it was um, F28, 137th of a second at ISO 100. Pretty substandard info for this kind of shot. So once you've gone through, or once I normally go through and find the particular frame that I want to use, which in this case is this one here, uh, I'll go up here and open it into Adobe Camera Raw, which is done with all Adobe CS6. So I'm using the CS6 workflow. So I'll start firstly by looking at the exposure. I'll see what's blown out. So this, the red indication over here will tell you if something's blown up and out of uh, the highlight range. So I'll usually take it down a bit if it does naturally fall into that category, first by the highlights, and if that doesn't quite do it, which in this case it does. Otherwise I bring down the exposure, but you generally want to keep the exposure about right if you set it well. So I'll put that down about minus 2.2. Then this is quite a contrasty image. Obviously you have the shadows down here, but then you have the highlights up here and then this mid-tone range here so you really want to try and expose for all of that so obviously you don't want to bring it all down to contrast because it just looks like a really dead flat image which you'll normally shoot it as a flat image but then show it as a contrast image so I'll reset that there I'll bring down the exposure just a little bit push up the shadows just a tiny bit bring down those whites and I'll generally push for the clarity meter usually I won't go past 80 which in this case might go 85. And then obviously shot on a cloudy day, the white balance was a fair way off. So it's, it's a tad on the warm side there because uh, the sand coming off the face of the wave tends to throw the white balance off the camera. So I'll pull this back just a bit. Obviously keep checking back to your original image to see what you're working with. It's usually quite fiddly when you're working with a file such as this as it really is just based on doing small increments of changes and checking back to the original to make sure you haven't gone too far because I mean if you're working towards something like this you don't want to go ridiculously far and realize that it doesn't look realistic uh, I'll pull the whites up a bit now that I've changed the white balance then probably one of the better tools I've learned in Adobe Camera Raw is the adjusted brush tool so what I'll first do is just go in and reset all the settings and I'll start by pulling down the exposure just by a little bit and this essentially just allows you to paint on adjustment to a selected part of the image. So I'll put the density up, size I'll keep around here, I'll bring the feather just down a tiny bit. If you click auto mask it will automatically select what the center point is as well as the surrounding area so if I clicked not auto mask it just makes a circle but if I did auto mask it, click, uh, it goes for the similar pixels in the range of the brush tool which is really useful for selecting this when you have such a fine area of the wave as it's pitching over. So what I'm going to do here is highlight the sky. I might just take this off to make sure I haven't missed anything. And what this white is just a simply a selection. So if I don't so it's just the selection of the mask. So I'll come down here and just make sure I cover those edges, then erase it with the auto mask tool so that none of this wave is selected. Because I only want to change the exposure of the sky because it was so bright in contrast to the wave, literally. So I'll make sure that's not selected. So if I was to take off show mask and bring the exposure down to a ridiculous level, you can see that I've missed a few little bits up here. And down here. It doesn't have to be too precise at this stage because it's this is just an extreme adjustment to see what I've missed. Okay, that looks about right for the mask. I'll reset this exposure. So that's completely, that's, I haven't made any changes. I've simply just selected that as a mask. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring down the highlights just a little bit, push up the contrast, push up the clarity. I'm gonna put the clarity right onto full there, same with the contrast, because this is such, like the clouds on a day like this with the, shuns, uh, the, sun, the sun shining through the back of it, it develops a really contrasty setting, which you really wanna bring out with the dark with a really dark, dark section and a really bright highlight section. I'm gonna bring down the exposure just a little bit here. So I wanna, I wanna give this image a quite a moody look to it because that's how I shot it. I shot it with the intention to edit it like that. 
So I'm going to bring down those shadows. I don't want to bring them down too much. So if you look up at your histogram here, anything that's too far down the left will be too dark. So I want to bring those down about there. Sharpness, I usually don't touch too much. I'll probably put it plus to five. And then the white balance. I want it to be quite a blue image because the skies were pretty blue. Minus five there. Let's check. Take away that pin. Okay, so that's what I'm working with there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go new brush. I'm going to reset all of these settings that I've done here. So I'm going to create a new layer mask. Well, the layer mask is for Photoshop. This is just a mask with the adjustment brush. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to push up the exposure and start this one here, but this time on the face of the wave because I want a different exposure setting for the wave because that's what it was. It was shot a lot, it's a lot darker on the wave as it is in the sun. And this is what the camera struggles to capture with DSLRs or action cameras is that they can't capture that dynamic range. So what you have to do is when, it sh when you shoot it flat in a flat image profile, you have to bring it out in post-production because the cam camera can't just capture the darkest bits perfectly in addition to the light bits. So let's just miss, make sure we don't miss any of these sections here. Okay, let's pop here. Okay, that seems about right. Okay, so let's bring this up a little bit. I really want to make this wave pop. So let's bring those highlights, maybe bring them up a bit. Let's pull a contrast right up. There we go. That's looking better than the clarity. That's my best friend in this situation. Pull the exposure back a bit. Okay, it's starting to look a bit too extreme. And of course, I'm just trying to replicate what I did from memory on this shot. So I'm going to pull the, expo uh, the temperature of the shot back a tiny bit as well. Let's see, So you can see the difference of those two adjustments there. So obviously for this section, I was darkening it, enhancing the contrast, and pulling back the highlights just a little bit. Meanwhile, for this bottom section here, I was pushing up the, uh, the exposure a bit, I was pumping up the contrast, pulling down the highlights, and the clarity was going up as well, which I might pull up just a little bit more. Yeah, obviously, clarity is just kind of the difference in tones. So I'll leave it at about 70, I think. That works about well. And then for this section, I want it to be in, uh, in sharpness, so I'll put it to about plus 30. Obviously, the image quality from this isn't the best, but you know, you work with what you have. So it's looking pretty good, although I don't quite like this section down here, moving off the masking. There's a section on the bottom left that had a water droplet on the frame. I'm not sure if you can see it just here. I think it's a water droplet. Yeah, it looks like a water droplet. Uh, it's a classic example of what can go wrong when you're in the surf and you've got waves coming out, you just don't check the lens. What I'm going to do is I'm going to crop it in here. I don't normally do this. I'm going to crop it in. Just also want to keep that horizon level, but mainly want to take out that smudge on the lens. So let's pull this up like that. It also allows you to focus in on the wave a little bit more. Yep, that's about right. Okay, so those, those are the basic adjustments from the beginning. And then the adjustment masks there. Okay, so that looks about right. Let's just zoom in. Yep, that, that's looking pretty good. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it into Photoshop. So I'm going to go open image. Just wait for it to read the changes I've done in Adobe Camera Raw. So this is the process I go through with all my images is I'll take them from Adobe Bridge, I'll open it. It's there's no preference to using Adobe Bridge, it's just a nice way to lay it out. So if you have it and use it, highly recommend it. Then I'll take it from Adobe Bridge into Camera Raw and do most of the adjustments in Camera Raw, especially if you're working with a RAW file. This wasn't a RAW file, this was only a JPEG, but I find the controls are a lot more friendly to video, uh, sorry, photo editing in Adobe Camera Raw as opposed to Photoshop itself. Photoshop's a lot more of the fine adjustments, layering and compositing as opposed to actual image editing in adjustment layers. Okay, here's my image. Um, I'm probably gonna pull the crop up just a tiny bit from what I did before. I just don't quite like it. 
as long as it is there. There we go, okay. That's about right. Okay, now what I wanna do is just pump up the levels in that top section. So what the levels does, it's kind of like contrast, really. So you can see if I move this middle slider, that's changing the mid-tones, this will change the darks. That'll change the highlights. Now highlights I don't wanna to touch, they're already borderline blown out. So I'm gonna pull this back just a tiny bit, but it'll look like overkill now, but you'll see why I'm doing this now. Pull it back just a tiny bit, pull that in just a bit. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is, so I'm gonna edit the mask. What I'm gonna do is gonna invert the mask, so black means hide all. So I'm working with the levels here. I'm gonna create a clipping mask that's only affecting the background. The background is the image. The mask is any change that I'm making to the image through a layer. So obviously if I were to turn this off, if the mask was disabled, and I was to turn this on and off, then that I can remove it at all times. It's not like a, cha a permanent change. So I'll re-enable that, but black means it's hiding. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint on white to the image, and by painting on white, I'm telling the telling Photoshop what I want to show the adjustment on. So as you can see here, I'm basically painting on the effect, but it's doing it onto the layer mask, so I can remove it or change it any time I want to. So I'm gonna paint this onto the background of the sky here. So here, if I wanna fill in any gaps, I can just click on the layer mask and show it just as a mask itself. So now you can see it's only affecting the background. So I haven't actually had to pull out this foreground into a separate uh, layer mask or anything like that. I'm just simply targeting the areas that I want to directly with the layer mask. So now I'm going to do a similar thing here with another levels adjustment. But this time, once again, I'm going to go invert. This time I'm going to target the bottom area. So I'm going to go and paint on again this section, roughly where I think it's going to be and work best. Then I'm just going to fill in these areas here. This is just a lot of it's just making sure you've got the right bit selected. It's a little bit finicky, but it's worth it in the end. Okay, so now I'm going to make my changes to the front. So I want to make the front, see, the front looks a little bit flat. If I reset that there, no changes. Just looks a little bit flat in comparison to the background. Doesn't quite look as realistic and it looks a bit kind of separated. So I want to bring those midtones down a bit. Leave the highlights more or less where they are, back just a tiny bit, and then pull those dark bits down a bit. So you can see the difference there. I probably want to pull that opacity of this change down just a bit. So that looks pretty good. Um, I'm pretty happy with that image. I might just bring up the, con the brightness just a tiny bit. Okay, so that pretty much does it for this edit. Um, from now on, it just comes down to publishing purposes, so saving, exporting, and putting the watermark on. So for that, I've just got a predetermined action, or obviously called watermark for this, which just adds it as a layer of a text document on top of the image. So I'll pull this down to here. I'll normally scale it down a little bit. I'll have it larger for the resolution. I'll put it not, obviously some people might put it across the middle of the image like that, but I just figure that's overkill, and even though someone might try and steal it, it's it's not really going to do any favours for your photography. So I usually put it in the bottom right or the bottom left corner if I can, otherwise I will put it up the top left or top right. But for this one I think I'll use the arrows to move it to the bottom right. And then obviously you don't want it to be too prominent, you want people to look at this before they look at your watermark. That should just be there so they can reference you. So I'll pull the opacity down, bevel and emboss. that about there. And then it's just a matter of saving it. And then you're done. So here's the original image the original, oops, yep, that's the original, and then here is the new image that we've edited.